Hare Krishna. Today is the most auspicious appearance day of uh, Bhaktivinoda Thakur. Um, Bhaktivinoda Thakur is also called the seventh Goswami. We just chanted the verses of the six Goswamis of Vrindavan. But Bhaktivinoda Thakur, who appeared uh, a few hundred years back in, in 1800s, he is called the seventh Goswami because of his vast contribution to uh, the literature that the Goswamis had started contributing. Bhaktivinoda Thakur, in his life, he written more than 90 books, including some of the most uh, illustrious books like Jaiva Dharma and Krishna Samhita and so many others. He written so many original poetry, uh, bhajans that we all sing now. Um, so many prayers. These are all original compositions from the fertile brain of Bhaktivinoda Thakur. Bhaktivinoda Thakur, he was known as Kedar Nath Dutt. And he was a magistrate in the British courts. And Bhaktivinoda Thakur, uh, during his time uh, as a magistrate in the British court, he was so good at his work that he uh, would finish a case in five minutes, which would normally take other judges at about five to six days to complete. That was the intelligence and brilliance of Bhaktivinoda Thakur. And his judgments were never wrong. He immediately got to the essence of the of the co of the case, and he would give really good quality judgments. The British were amazed by the quality of work that Bhaktivinoda Thakur was uh, doing, and they were more amazed by his schedules. Bhaktivinoda Thakur, he had the most demanding schedule humanly possible. He would sleep just a few hours every day. That was his regular life, you know. And uh, Bhaktivinoda Thakur, he achieved so much in his uh, little uh, you know, existence in this world that uh, it was practically impossible for a normal human being to achieve what Bhaktivinoda Thakur achieved in his lifetime. Probably it will take us many, many lifetimes to achieve what Bhaktivinoda Thakur has achieved. And therefore, Bhaktivinoda Thakur is considered to be one of the most exemplary Acharyas for many, many reasons. Not only that he contributed uh, so much to uh, the literature of uh, Gaudi Vaishnavism, but also because of the example that he set uh, for the world. He was a Grahastha, having a, a wife, 10 children, a full-fledged job. And in spite of that, the kind of life that he lived was just unbelievable. The kind of contribution that he did was just unbelievable. Most people who have full-fledged jobs and a family to take care of, one or two children, they say, we can't do much spiritually. And look at this man, 10 children. Imagine having 10 children, you know. And on top of that, he had a very demanding job as a magistrate of the British High Courts. But still, he did so much spiritually. I'm just going to read out to you Bhaktivinoda Thakur's schedule, just so that you understand what kind of a person he was and how much he did, basically. Uh, Bhaktivinoda Thakur, his daily schedule was as follows. 8 o'clock to 10 o'clock at night, he would rest. These were, he would sleep for two hours. 10 o'clock to 4 o'clock, he would write. 10 p.m. to 4 a.m. When the whole world slept, Bhaktivinoda Thakur would write. Uh, 4 to 4.30 a.m., he would rest again, half an hour. 4.30 to 7 a.m., he would chant his japa. 7 to 7.30 a.m., he would, uh, uh, you know, answer letters and mails. You know, he would do his correspondence, basically. 7.30 to 9.30 a.m., he would study scriptures. 9.30 to 10 a.m., he would have a bath, he would take prasadam. And typically, his uh, prasad would be half a liter of milk, uh, some fruit, and two chapatis. This was typically his, uh, you know, what he would eat. And then, 10 to 1 p.m., he was doing his court duties as a magistrate. Um, 1 to 2 p.m., he would come back home and take rest, and he would eat his lunch. 2 to 5 p.m., Again, he would go back and do his court duties. 
and then come back at 5 p.m. home. 5 to 8 p.m. you would engage in preaching activities. Now tell me, is there any possibility of any any human being doing something like this? And Bhakti Taco did this all his life. And the most amazing thing was when the British uh, in a government saw the contribution of Akhyanu Thakur and saw how effective he was at this time, they really respected his time. And they created a railway track only from his house to the court. Only for one person, they created an entire railway track. And they would send a train only to pick up Akhyanu Thakur and drop him in the court. And pick up pick him up from the court and drop him back at, at home. Because he followed time so perfectly and he was so conscious of his time. Even five minutes was important because he, would, he could solve a major case uh, in those five minutes. Bhaktivinoda Thakur solved some of the most complicated cases during his era. Uh, and uh, the, wherever the Britishers, especially when they found cases that were very complicated because they, the Britishers didn't understand the Indian systems, they would involve Bhaktivinoda Thakur. And Bhaktivinoda Thakur would solve the case. In fact, even in the administration of Jagannath Puri Temple in Puri, Bhaktivinoda Thakur was made in charge. He was a magistrate in charge for the Jagannath Puri Temple. And he personally put so many systems in place in Jagannath Puri. And he brought so much of uh, order into the Jagannath Puri management. One time, the Britishers came across a case that was very, very complex. They were just not able to understand how to handle this matter. There was a godman whose name was Bishak Sen. And this man, he was uh, very, very powerful. He was so powerful that uh, he could control people from far distances. And uh, fire would emanate from his body. And he was so powerful that thousands and thousands of people were visiting him in his cave and uh, all kinds of uh, wrong activities were happening uh, in that cave but the Britishers had no idea how to handle this matter because it was a very sensitive matter because it involved faith. Bhaktivana Thakur was called to handle this matter. Bhaktivana Thakur did a thorough study of the case and he understood that this man, Bishak Shane, he was not any god man, he was a cheater, but he had some yogic siddhis, yogic powers. And based on those yogic powers and magic that he was showing, he was completely convincing people that he was a great uh, you know, person. In fact, he declared himself to be an incarnation of Vishnu, come on earth. People were going mad at that point in time. Thousands of people are following Bishak Sen. Imagine, this is the era where there was no social media. There was no news, uh, you know, uh, way to spread information so quickly. But yet, thousands of people were going to this man simply by word of mouth. Bishak Sen became so powerful. He appointed one person as Brahma. And he appointed another person as Shiva. And he appointed, you know, another lady as Lakshmi who claimed to be his wife. And the four of them were literally ruling villages over there in that era. Bhaktivinoda Thakur, at some point, after doing thorough study, interviewing hundreds of people, after understanding that this man is a is not a god man, he is actually a cheater, Bhaktivinoda Thakur conducted a raid in that cave while there was a full assembly of his devotees. And when Bhaktivinoda Thakur reached there with, uh, with the police and the British uh, officers, uh, Bhaktivinoda Thakur told the British officers, go and arrest this man. And the British officers, when they were going next to this person, he was emitting fire from his body. The Britishers were very bewildered and confused. They had never seen anything like this. And they didn't know how to handle this. Bhaktivinoda Thakur told them, don't worry, just go and catch him. Somehow they managed to catch him. And they pulled him to the jail. And uh, this man was presented in front of the court. Bhaktivinoda Thakur was presiding that judgment. And this, the case went on for many, many days. And through that entire duration, this man had so much power that he did not eat or drink. For many days together, almost close to about 
seven or eight days, he didn't touch any grains, nor did he touch water. But this man's power was increasing more and more and more because of his yogic siddhis. And to the extent that he even controlled Bhaktivana Thakur's family. There was a point in time when Bhaktivana Thakur's daughter fell very, very sick. She was almost on the verge of dying. And this man told Bhaktivana Thakur that if you don't let me go, your entire family will get destroyed. I promise you that. So this man had the power to control somebody else's uh, you know, health. Imagine, he was sitting in the jail, but his daughter was, Bhaktivana Thakur's daughter was falling sick at home. And his wife, Bhaktivana Thakur's wife felt, why are we taking so much of anxiety for this one case? He told, she told him, just let this fellow go. Let our daughter live. Bhaktivana Thakur said, no. If someone is misusing a dharmic text, someone is misusing the name of Vishnu for his own gains, I will not let that person do that. No matter what happens to me or my family. Bhaktivana Thakur was adamant. In fact, in the court, when Bhaktivana Thakur was supposed to pronounce the judgment, this Bishak Sain, he uh, induced a heart attack, a very, very powerful heart a pain in Bhaktivana Thakur's chest. And while Bhaktivana Thakur was writing the judgment, he was having such intense pain in his chest, it almost felt he would die then and there. This man, standing in the courtroom, was controlling Bhaktivana Thakur like this. Bhaktivana Thakur, with all that pain in his chest, he pronounced a judgment and sentenced this person for life imprisonment. And you know, and when this person was sentenced, Bhaktivana Thakur finished the sentence, he collapsed on his seat. This man was dragged away from the court. And as this man was dragged away, there was one British officer there that had gone, he was very much following this whole court procedure. He was very impressed with Bhaktivana Thakur. But he did his own research on these kind of yogic uh, powers and siddhis. And then he found out that such people, such yogic siddhis, their entire power rests in their hair. So they, they grow these huge jatas and hairs and they don't cut it at all because they invest all their powers in these hairs. And this British officer heard about it that the entire power of these people rests in their hair. So this man, he ran behind this guy who was being dragged away by the other officers. He had a huge scissor with him. He went and chopped off the hair of this person. As soon as the hair of this person was chopped off by this British officer, this man collapsed. All his yogic siddhis just vanished and he became an ordinary person. And in so many days of fasting, not eating, not drinking, he completely collapsed his body and he was completely unconscious. And then they could manage to control him. And if after that, he became a completely ordinary man without any siddhis and powers. That's how Bhaktivinoda Thakur, he brought ju uh, uh, justice to this particular uh, uh, case. Many, many such stories of Bhaktivinoda Thakur exist. I highly recommend all of you all today to go and do some research and study the life of Bhaktivinoda Thakur. And there is in fact an entire book called The Seventh Goswami. It's a book that I highly recommend you all to read, which gives great details about the life and contribution of Bhaktivinoda Thakur. In fact, Bhaktivinoda Thakur was one of those futuristic visionaries who predicted that in every town and village, uh, the holy name will be sung. Mahaprabhu's prediction will come true. And there will be a day when Russians, Chinese, Indians, Americans, Europeans will all come together and sing and dance, chanting the Hare Krishna Mahamantra. And that prediction was fulfilled by Srila Prabhupada in the 1960s and 70s. Actually, in Mayapur, there were thousands and thousands of Westerners from all over the world coming and singing and dancing. Even today, we find that phenomena and it's gone as a fulfillment of Bhaktivinoda Thakur's dream. We find such acharyas like Bhaktivinoda Thakur of the capability and of the caliber of Bhaktivinoda Thakur existed in our parampara. You can imagine how powerful our parampara is and how fortunate we are to be a part of this parampara. Uh, Srila Prabhupada himself was so powerful. His guru, Bhaktivinoda Sar Thakur was even more powerful. And his guru, Gaur Krishna Babaji Maharaj, was even more powerful. And his guru, Bhaktivinoda Thakur, 
who was also the father of Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati, was such a powerful person, all the way leading up to the Goswamis of Vrindavan. So let us, on this very auspicious day of the appearance of Bhakti Thakur, take shelter of these great Acharyas who have shown us so much direction and hope in our lives, and follow in their footsteps and achieve the perfection of our own life. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna.